So before I begin this video, let me just say, DC's young adult graphic novels have never been good. I was expecting this. I saw all the warning signs. Ladies and gentlemen, Gotham High. An alternative universe, a high school take on Batman. Now, this is probably the worst that we've seen from the young adult graphic novels, but granted, there have been a lot of them. You got the Teen Titans Raven, the Under the Moon, which I reviewed also. That was terrible. Under the Moon was laughably bad. Uh, then you got the Harley Quinn and Mara. Now, all of these books here, the idea is to hit the young adult market, so what they try to do is they take a more casual take on the superhero. They try to put them in a more high school-like setting. And for some characters, I think that works. For some, it doesn't. Teen Titans, for example, I think that could work if you put the Teen Titans in a more casual high school scenario, because there are a lot of teenage superhero content out there that does feature them going to high school. So I think if that's done right, it could be well executed. That being said, the actual book was pretty meh and I was not convinced to read the rest of it. And it also really annoys me how giant the fucking author's name is on this book. I thought the Raven book was called Kami Garcia at first. I thought, oh, was that Raven's new civilian name? No, it's the author. She just put her name obnoxiously at the top in giant text. And of course, that same writer is working with Gabriel to do another another Teen Titans book with Beast Boy this time, and look, her name, her name's still at the top! Beast Boy, all the way down here in tiny little text. It's so irritating. Are you really so important that you need to be in giant letters at the top? And a lot of the writers who are working on these books are New York Times best-selling authors who usually have no experience in comics whatsoever, which really makes for awkward storytelling when it comes to actually reading these graphic novels. But at least for all of these books, they never changed the race of the characters, right? Gotham High, however, they want to change everything. Now, one of the crazy things about this young adult graphic novel, the story of how it even came to be, they picked her out, right? She's a uh, what, let me guess, New York best, New York Times best-selling author, yeah, there it is, right at the top. They pick these people out and they basically just ask them, you know, all of our DC characters are up for grabs, you can do alternative versions of them, just pick one. And she picked Batman. Obviously, she she wants the the biggest big boy. So I have to I have to read it straight from her quote so that you understand the full context. Bruce Wayne is the billionaire. He's the richest man alive. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun if his family was Chinese and from Hong Kong? That made it feel real. I'm part Chinese. My brother lives in Hong Kong. So I thought it would be great to put what I know into Bruce Wayne. I just wanted him to be a little bit more representative of my background and giving him an authentic family. So this plays into the idea that what characters you write have to be reflective of your gender or your race or your sexuality. And that's something that's very creatively restrictive. So Cruz is basically saying uh, the character Bruce Wayne doesn't feel real because he's not Asian like me. So I had to change him make them Asian. And that's just weird. <laughs> that's just weird to me. It kind of makes me think, what are white people like in Cruz's vision? Do you really think we're so different that you can't, <laughs> you can't even relate to them? We're not that different. We're just white. And of course, other people are saying that this is basically going to be a self-insert character. And you know how self-insert characters are when it comes to uh, writing. Quite entertaining. You know what the real problem is with Cruz writing Bruce Wayne? She's not white, so obviously she had to change him to be Asian, just like her. But she's also not a man, so she should probably change him to be a woman, just like her. And uh, her name also isn't Bruce Wayne. Her name is Melissa. She should probably change Bruce's name to Melissa, too. Actually, she should just put herself in the book. But wait! It gets better. 
Alfred is not just his butler, but also his uncle. His gay uncle from Hong Kong! It gives this fabulous, crazy, rich Asian sheen to it. Alfred is gay, and he is fabulous! I pitched a kind of gossip girl Batman, and in my mind, I wanted to reinvent Chuck Bass. He's still Bruce Wayne, he's still a loner, and he still has all that iconic Batman personality. You can't mess with that much. But making him Chinese was a no-brainer. Everyone was on board for the beginning. Oh, I bet they were. I bet they were on board. Look how the artist is talking about how they were trying to use uh, Instagram and social media art styles for the look of this comic. And he made the Joker look like him. But wait! It gets better. I wanted to write about a young Bruce Wayne, so obviously there's going to be a love story. The Joker's pretty hot, so he's gotta be in there. That's where I started. I wanted to write something about how he dealt with his wealth, because I've always written stories about how things that people think are great actually don't ar turn out to be so great. So I wanted to show how it's not actually great to be that rich. It's actually a barrier between Bruce and everyone around him. It's almost a burden to be so different. I wanted to put that in the batman Joker dynamic. They're almost the same person, but Bruce has all this privilege and Jack has nothing. What does that do to who they become? And then there's a girl in the middle. The hottest girl to ever walk the halls of the school. And what does she want? It came out of trying to figure out all their desires. What does Jack bring to Selena that's different from what Bruce brings to Selena? Ultimately, you don't know who she's going to pick. You root for both of them, and then there's a surprise at the end. <laughs> all right, love triangle between Bruce, the Joker, and Selena. Oh God! I, I like I said, you gotta expect this when you've been looking at what they've been producing for, for the last few years now. The whole idea behind the young adult graphic novel line that DC has been putting out is they wanna, they wanna get that manga money. And they're not getting that manga money because they're doing it wrong! So look, romance manga sells in Japan and sells over here too because they do it right. Because they have original characters and interesting dynamics. Remember how I said some of these books could work. Like the Teen Titans, it makes sense. They're teenagers. Maybe there is an alternative version where they go to high school. Batman Love Triangle doesn't work. People who are into Batman are expecting a much different vibe. You can't just mash two vibes together and expect it to work. But also, they're pulling these people from, like, New York Times best-selling authors. Writing a novel is not exactly the same as writing a comic. Not all stories translate well. The teenagers who are reading her young adult novels are probably not the same people who read comics. So maybe the idea is they're going to get her original audience over here to the comics realm. I don't think that's going to work, though, because they probably also don't want their romance mashed with Batman. Some things just don't mash together well, like I said. They're two completely different audiences who are expecting two completely different things. But hey, maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh. Maybe I shouldn't judge a book before I myself have read it. So let's read the preview. This is where the video really starts. Welcome to Gotham High City's Arkham Repertory School for Boys, one of the most famous and prestigious private schools in the country. More future presidents, senators, tycoons, and CEOs have passed through these halls than anyone can count. It prides itself on its school motto, life and courage, and it must be noted, cruelty. While there are 25 useful Latin verbs and only four ways to conjugate them, there are an infinite number of ways to be cruel at Arkham through social media. Yep, we're getting into troll territory! Digital life and IRL. Something smells out here, don't you think? Maybe you didn't wear deodorant today? Say that again, asshole. Punches him in the face. Oh no, a fight scene! Oh no, who, who could have saved him? Who saved him? Let's get out of here, huh? Oh my god, it's Bruce Wong! Wayne! He looks really Asian, doesn't he? You okay? Where'd you learn to fight like that? Tell Master Shang I sent you, and, and he, 
He gives him a card. Wind, water, flame, earth. Like all schools nowadays, Arkham Prep has zero tolerance for bullying. Of course, zero tolerance often means the school does what the schools do best. Nothing. Zip. Zero. Mr. Wayne, I can't say it's a pleasure to see you in my office again. Oh, I don't know about that. I, for one, have always enjoyed our little chats. I asked your uncle to be here today, but no one could get a hold of him. It is the middle of the night in Hong Kong. Be that as it may, I presume you're familiar with security cameras? Well, as it happens, Arkham Prep is full of them. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here. Remember when I said that novels don't translate well to comics? All of this should be done in like two pages. The fact that it's going on for this long is a mistake. I expect comics to move a lot faster than that. I, I expect it to be more based around cool art and less based around loads of dialogue and sitting around. All right, ba ba back to reading because this is important. You're learning something today. The boys have already been spoken to about their treatment of Richard Grayson, and I would have been able to treat your infraction in the same manner except it appears this little stunt has, as the kids say, gone viral. There is only one recourse, I'm afraid. Instant expulsion. Do you have anything to say for yourself? I should have disabled the cameras. In Gotham City, however, some of us aren't as lucky as the boys at Arkham Prep. Some of us have to dig in the dirt while staring up at the stars. Like my friend. Jack Napier. Rough around the edges, sure, with nothing to his name but a wicked sense of humor. Hey, right, he's buying a book! They say he who laughs last, laughs best. But Jack might argue with that. What up, pranksters? What up, Jack? Whoa, watch it, asswipes. Bet you can't afford this, and he, uh, he flips them off. Yes, yes, that is, that is what he, what he does. How's that for a welcome home? Oh, and it, it, it is Bruce. It is Bruce in the limousine. What is a home, anyway? On the other, better side of town in Arcadia Park, the most exclusive neighborhood in Gotham City, a little bird told me that Bruce was headed back to Wayne Manor. You see how much fucking narration there is? Remember what I said before about how it doesn't always translate well to a comic? You see what I mean? Not sure if you heard, but Bruce hasn't been home in years. His uncle shipped him off to boarding school the minute his parents died. He probably doesn't remember me, but I'm sure he'll remember this. He'll remember his mother. Before Ma Shi Dean became Martha Wayne, she was the most beautiful girl in Hong Kong and from the richest family. Few knew it was her that started with Rain Enterprises. According to sources, everything fell apart the night when they went to see Madame Butterfly. What started as a perfect evening soon became a night of terror. When they got home, the thieves were everywhere. His father fell first. His mother was next. Bruce never talked about it. He was too ashamed. I know he must have blamed himself because even though the thieves left him alone, he couldn't move, unable to do anything, unable to save them. Uncle Alfred took custody of Bruce when his parents died. He came to Gotham from Hong Kong, but he was too brokenhearted by his sister's death. Now Alfred moved back to Gotham City for good. He wants to make it up to him. Now they can be a family. You're coming into your trust fund in a month on your 18th birthday. I'm sure you've taken care of everything well, uncle. I suppose you could say that. You are a billionaire. You're welcome, by the way. I'd give all the money in the world to have them back. How do I know all this? I'm the girl next door, Selena Garcia Kyle. Hi. Yeah, the house has seen better days, just like me. So the rumors are true. My old playmate is home. Hmm. Welcome back, jerk. Oh, Jack, you know me so well. Oh, he bought the book for her! He bought the book for her! I'm already seeing it coming. She's gonna pick Jack. There might be a twist at the end. She doesn't pick Jack. And then he lashes out because he got cucked by Bruce. So he, he's, he goes on a, a murder rampage and then he gets arrested and goes to juvie. All right, I figured the book out. So now obviously this was probably the worst time to announce Gotham High because not too long ago, Marvel announced Safe Space 
and Snowflake. So now people are seeing that DC is following that same trend of not understanding teenagers and what they want at all. I'm closer to the age group that they are looking for, and I am more in touch with the comic and manga community than the writer is. I would not read this. Even in my prime teenage years, I would not read this. It kind of went like this. Pre-teen years, pre-teens, I was looking for the romance, right? And then later on down the line, I was looking for the more darker stuff, more action-based stuff, maybe some horror every now and then. And then even later down the line, I was looking for more comedic action. And now, now probably, um, what appeals to me most is comedic action. But granted, I can enjoy, you know, a lot of different genres depending on how well they're written. I think most teenagers will probably be looking for the darker stuff. I think they'll be looking for the more serious stuff and less for the high school stuff, but I do know that there is a percentage of teenagers who are looking for the rom-coms. They're looking for the dramas. And I think most of those readers would have probably read this if it were a novel. Not so much if it were a comic, because comic readers are looking for something different than what they get in text. And the drama isn't even that great. I mean, as far as love triangles go, it's a very easy drama to do. Honestly, I look at this picture and I almost think like they're, they're talking down to teenagers. Like, this is what you like, right? You like social media and stuff like that, right? DC's young adult uh, lineup has always been pretty cringy. This is Jeff definitely peak. We have peaked at Gotham High. So, what do you think about this whole thing? Definitely leave your thoughts, your comments, your questions and concerns down below in the comments section. As usual, remember to like the video so that I know that you enjoy. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye! Program restart.